This is the brand new Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. This little thing is an absolute content creator machine, in my opinion. It's got an 85 to 125 true optical zoom lens. How do you fit one of these in a phone? We've got the 24 mil and the 16 mil, and all three of these lenses shoot at 120 frames a second in 4K, and they all have real-time eye tracking touch autofocus. I'm in one of my favorite places in the entire world, Ibiza, check out this rock. This is Esvedra, it's a little bit naughty. I'm gonna be taking this phone through a couple of little tests on this trip and bring you lot with me, and we can, you know, actually have a look at it and see if it's any good, because uh, I've done some tests, and I'm not gonna lie. I'm well impressed mate. Big thanks to Sony for partnering with me and giving you lot a bit of an early doors test of this thing. I also take it underwater in an underwater housing because you know like you can't be just chucking a phone around in salt water. It's no good for the phone mate. So let's have a little look at some of the shots and I'll catch you lot in a bit. Bosh. So, the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV, mate. What do you think? Enjoy the footage? I honestly think that 85mm is a bit of a game changer. For someone who creates content, you want different focal ranges to create like an entire scene. To have like a different story technique, to have a way of like showing emotion, going in tight, shooting at a high frame rate for different creative reasons. I think this thing's incredible. It actually has some decent bokeh as well. When I was shooting on this, the bokeh, I didn't expect to see like that much bokeh on this phone because obviously the sensor is pretty small. It's not like a massive sensor, it's in a phone. It's a really nice amount of separation between the subject and the background. Obviously, NDs are important because you want to try and make sure that you keep your shutter speed nice and low. So when I shoot on this phone or pretty much any phone, I always make sure that I've got NDs. To me, they're pretty much the most important element of shooting on a phone. High shutter speeds really don't do it for me, as you lot know. I always want to be keeping a 180 degree shutter rule when I'm shooting, and shooting that on a phone is a little bit hard. Now, there are some new features on this phone that the Sony Xperia Pro I hasn't got. It's now got a wide dynamic range, which essentially just gives you a little bit more dynamic range in them highlights and in the shadows. We've obviously got that 10-bit HDR, which we can actually shoot HDR in 120 frames. HDR, 120 frames and 4K with autofocus. That's a bit sick. Obviously you don't get that real-time eye tracking and touch tracking in that higher frame rate. We only get the touch and real-time eye tracking when you go up to 30 frames a second. So anything higher than that, you only get like your, your standard autofocus, which I'm not gonna lie, is still incredible. We also don't get that wide dynamic range in them higher frame rates. So if you wanna kind of get the most out of like a filmmaking sense, you're probably gonna wanna be shooting in your 24, 25, 30p so that you can then unlock those extra settings like the wide dynamic range, eye tracking and the touch tracking. One of the other limitations are that we do not get that electronic image stabilization when we are in the wide dynamic range. So whatever your priorities are at the end of the day, that's when you're gonna kinda wanna select your different motives. I personally don't like electronic image stabilization. It's not my cup of tea. I don't like the kind of weird stuff that it does to the image on pretty much every every device ever that does electronic image stabilization. I don't like it. Honestly, this is why I love this place, look. It's just so beautiful. I took a boat round there once. It was peng. I love how the cloud goes over the top. I actually took some shots of it earlier on the phone, so let me uh, whack those up so that you can have a little look. It's absolutely gorgeous. I, I don't know why, I just keep coming back to this place. It is just unreal. Blue ass water. Oh yeah, I also took the phone underwater. Obviously stuck it in an underwater housing because you don't want to be getting phones or any technology near salt water. It doesn't do them any favours. To be completely honest, I think it's probably better to stick a phone underwater than like a big DSLR camera. Obviously, this thing is a lot smaller, a lot cheaper, and I don't want to be lugging around like a really big underwater housing for my camera. I can literally just take a phone, a very small underwater housing, and I can get shots that look absolutely stunning underwater with 120p, 4K, autofocus, it's ridiculous. I honestly can't see myself using a DSLR larger camera underwater over something like this. We've also got a 50% brighter display on this thing. Now, 
as all of you video shooters know, you need to be able to see your display to monitor your image when you're shooting, especially for video, because pretty much any phone don't do so well in the highlights. You want to make sure that you expose for your highlights, bring up your shadows a little bit if you want to get that tiny bit more dynamic range, but try and do your best to expose your highlights. That's where I find to get the best image out of this thing. So in Video Pro, we can pretty much select all of our settings, like pretty much exactly the same as if you would like on your alpha camera, which is pretty sick. I like to have full manual control over my settings because obviously the most important thing for me is that shutter speed. You lot know I get a bit mad over shutter speeds. This particular model is also aimed at like live streamers. So it's got some really interesting live streaming capabilities, which I'm going to be testing in a later video. And you can also use this as an external monitor for some of your alpha cameras. So that's why it's getting a bit moody up in here. But in all honesty, I think that that 85 to 125 mil is like, it's pretty revolutionary for a phone. We are like starting to see a real like use case for phones from a filmmaking storytelling perspective. I'm not saying I would completely move over to a phone. That's a bit ridiculous of a claim to make. Obviously I love shooting on bigger cameras been my life for like the last 15 years but we're starting to see a real use case for these things an 85 to 125 mil lens in a phone that 24 mil 16 mil for them wide establishings the tighter for the more like close-up emotional sides that we want to shoot on obviously it's great for photos 85 mil is a perfect focal length for shooting photos every area is covered we got 4k we got 120 frames 60 frames like, I don't know what else we could possibly want. It's starting to get a bit scary just how good these phones are actually getting for shooting videos. One thing that does actually annoy me a little bit is that 85 mil. When you're shooting handheld, it, it doesn't stabilize well. Obviously, 85 mil is a very, very tight focal length. Any handheld movement isn't gonna be great at the best of times on any camera. But we do get some like interesting movement with the image stabilization we obviously have image stabilization on all of these lenses electronically and optically on the 85 mil i really like doing handheld stuff but most of the time i shot on the 85 mil i did do it on a gimbal i think that's going to be your best bet for shooting on that larger focal length but it's absolutely stunning when you're on a gimbal on a tripod anyway over the next couple of months i'm going to be doing like an actual little short film with this thing so hang about for that because i honestly think it's going to be pretty good it's going to be interesting to see what you can do with a phone with these like kind of filmmaking capabilities cheers from our beefa my favorite place on planet earth and my g annie b anyway thanks so much for watching and i'll be catching you lots in the next one mate Posh.